The title of this evening's message is Ham Went Through the Church. You see, it's not enough to go through the church. You've got to get in the church, and you need to get the church in you. But Ham just went through the church, and in our Bible studies, we have studied Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, Seth, Enoch, and Noah. And the Bible tells us a little bit about Noah's family. In Genesis 5, it says that Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And this evening, we're going to look at Ham, Noah's middle child. And I suppose there is no doubt that Ham must have suffered from a little bit of middle child syndrome. We know enough about Ham to know he was married and he had a family. We also know that Ham did something incredibly shameful and sinful to his father, Noah. So I want to go to the New Testament, and I want to read some scriptures to you but I, that I feel are incredibly relevant. 2 Peter chapter 3, we'll begin in verse 2. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me there. It says that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust. And remember, this is about Ham and about his sons. Not Peter's writings here. I'm talking about the sermon is about Ham and his sons. And verse 4 says this, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation from the beginning of the creation nothing has seemed to change everything still seems to be the same and the word of god does not clearly define ham's sin but it does lead us to know and understand that the sin caused god to pass over him when he uh, when he was blessing his brothers and when he was blessing shem and japheth you see ham lived in a very incredible and exciting time and 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 ham he saw the world of sin before the flood, and he saw his dad build a giant boat. He saw things you and I have never experienced, and Ham sailed through the flood to be saved on the other side. You see, Ham is one of the eight people who got to see the world on both sides of the flood. Only eight people of all of those who were alive at that point got to see both sides of the catastrophic, catastrophic flood. Ham saw technology and music, arts, and science that had already been discovered prior to the flood. And he most likely realized he no longer had a lot of the things, the possessions, the sciences, the arts, the entertainment that he had before the flood. And if you have not already realized it in life, you'll soon realize that those things do not satisfy your soul. And God and I, neither one of us, have any problem with you having possessions or education or wealth. In fact, I hope and pray that you are blessed and that you have a nice home, good transportation, money in the bank and other goods, food on your table and clothes on your back. I hope and pray that God blesses you. And he certainly blessed Lot, uh, sorry, he certainly blessed Job and Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and so many other people in the Bible. And so he can bless you and me too. But earthly possessions do not satisfy you. And if you in your life place emphasis on the material goods and material possessions, then you, you dull your spiritual awareness and your spiritual capabilities. You become spiritually dead when you focus on the possessions, the physical, and the material. And prior to the flood, Ham had lived in a very sinful and very materialistic society. And we know from the fact that only eight people got in the ark with Noah that almost every, every person with whom Ham was associated, they were not spiritual people. They didn't get in the boat. And those people, they did not believe in God, and they certainly didn't believe the preaching of Noah. They didn't get on the ark. And they prided themselves in their education, their science, their arts, their music. And they prided themselves in their intellectual accomplishments. And, and they were eating and drinking and marrying, giving in marriage. And till the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. The incredible truth of Adam and Eve, the creation of all things by an almighty God and faithfulness to God had all but disappeared on the earth. It was almost gone. Only eight people got on the ark. There, there was only one family who was still teaching 
about the fall of man, about the nature of sin. There was only one group of people that were still teaching about the need for righteousness and the need for that sacrificial atonement. There was only one man that was still preaching about the judgment of God. And after the rapture and the translation of Enoch, God had to search the earth to find one righteous and just man who was a true believer. And Noah, he was that man, and Noah was recognized by God as righteous. And Noah was preaching to a sinful world about a loving God who was also a judge. I doubt Ham realized it prior to the flood, but Ham was incredibly blessed to have such an amazing dad. A dad who was bold enough to preach the gospel and a man who was wise enough to build an ark before the flood came. Those who lived before the flood, with the exception of Noah and his family, they gradually and ultimately ignored spiritual truths. And we know that nature abhors, uh, abhors a vacuum, and the absence of spiritual truths being taught created a spiritual vacuum. And any time there's a vacuum, something else rushes in to fill that vacuum. And if you empty yourself of God, you will create a spiritual vacuum. And spiritually speaking, the absence of teaching the one true God, the absence of teaching creation by an almighty creator, righteousness, holiness, sacrifice, separation, all of this absence of these things led to a spiritual vacuum, which was filled by the lies of Satan by the generation of Noah, who was only the eighth generation. If you do not read his word, you will create a knowledge vacuum in your life and Satan will send something to fill it. If you do not pray, you will create a spiritual communication vacuum in your life and Satan will send something to fill that vacuum. And so tonight I want to tell you, do not give Satan a vacuum to fill. People have always believed in something. Everyone believes in something. And if they do not believe in God's word, they're going to believe another word. That word may be man's word. That word may be Satan's word. Either way, if it's not God's word, it's the wrong word. So you need to fill yourself in your life with the things of God. Fill yourself in your life with his word so that you do not have a vacuum in your life that Satan can fill. If you feel empty, then I want to tell you tonight, fill your life up with God. If you feel empty, then I want to tell you, get filled with the Holy Spirit. Fill your time with God's praise. Fill your moments with his worship. Fill your thoughts of, of Jesus. Read his word. Pray. Talk about the rapture. Sing his songs. Clap your hands. Make a joyful noise. Do these things that fill you up. Our society likes to ignore spiritual truths. And, and like the people of Ham's day, we live in an age when science and superstition hold hands. And never before has man known so much about the nature of the physical universe. And they continue to discover more every single day. In fact, I just read this week about a tree that they thought was uh, extinct. And they found it again and realized that the tree is not extinct. And, and, and these things, humans just keep finding out more and more that they did not know. And we have this desire for technology and education. We had the desire to go to the moon and to send cameras to take pictures of Mars. And I was reading this week about the pictures we're supposed to get back. They said we will be able to see with such perfect detail as if we were there. That's pretty awesome. And, and, and we discover and, and dive deep into the blue oceans looking for new fish and new things and new creatures. And, and yet there are significantly more broadcasts on radio and television channels discussing spiritual things of witches, phys, uh, uh, psychics, and sensationalism than there are discussions about science or exploring the universe. Why? Because we do love our technology and our materialism but we have found that doesn't satisfy souls. And so you can go watch the Animal Planet and you can go watch the Discovery Channel on television and, and go ahead and check this out. Even on those stations, they take time out to have shows about psychics and witches and spiritualism. Even on those stations that are supposed to be about the planets and the stars and the animals. Because we crave spiritual things, humans do. that talk about spiritual things and witches and demons, ghosts and the afterlife. 
And so much that is not about exploring our great planet or, or the universe is, is perpetuating everything. Why? Because discovery of the natural never satisfies the spiritual. Discovery of the natural never satisfies the spiritual. The road to modernity has led us down the path to amazing, uh, amazing discovery, so much so that we are intellectual giants. The, the, the intellectualism of today's society is, is unfathomable. It's amazing. But spiritually, we're puny. Spiritually, we're weak and wimpy. I'm talking about us as a whole, not you here tonight. I'm talking about human beings. We may be intellectual giants, but we're not spiritual giants. In Noah's day, prior to the flood, Ham saw people who were demon-possessed, devoted to cults, witches, spiritualists, and so much more. And we see all that today, and, and your children see it too. In fact, the spiritualist of that day could deceive the very elect until they were put under the curse of God. And so Jesus told John the Revelator, he said, there are deep things of Satan that you may not understand. He, he spoke directly to the church, and he's speaking to the church and said, there are deep things of Satan you're not going to understand. But there are people all over this globe who are deep into spiritual things, and, and they are evil people and sick people. How can you look at Hitler and not know this? There are witches and evil devil worshipers who are deep into their spiritual practices they're demon worship, and you don't have to look very far to realize there are people who are full of iniquity. And this happens because Satan deceives people. There's nobody who went and said, I want to live in a deep, dark, um, miserable, depressed state. They don't do that. They get fooled. They get tricked. They get misled. And, and nature abhors a vacuum. And spiritually speaking, uh, we also abhor a vacuum. And so spiritual things, if they're sucked out of your life, then other things are going to replace that. And so if you leave your life empty of God, Satan's going to do everything he can to fill your life with him. And a society that rejects the word of God will invariably accept and believe the lies of Satan. So when Ham was young prior to his dad taking him on the ark. The calls in society were for liberty and freedom. Don't oppress me. Does that sound similar to today? That sounds like today. And as a result, lawlessness was the result, and that is exactly what is happening today. Lawless, lawlessness is prevailing in our society today because nobody wants to be oppressed. Nobody wants to follow rules. Everyone wants freedom. And, and everyone is seeking for this. But what they don't realize is he that the Son has set free is free indeed. What they don't realize is that freedom is found in Jesus Christ. What they don't realize is what they're searching for is spiritual, not physical. And they think they're going to find it in education. And they think they're going to find it in more money. And they think they're going to find it in making everybody equal. But where they're going to find what they're looking for is in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. The phenomenon of our current society is not new. It's just repeating and repeating. You deny God's word. You deny God. Sin and lawlessness then reign in society. So Ham, his friends, his associates, they denied God. They denied God's word. They denied God's ways, and ultimately they found themselves living in a society where every person was doing his own thing and fending for himself. And as a result, respect for others had eroded and disappeared. Respect for the law had eroded and disappeared. So what you are witnessing in 2022, right here in the greatest nation ever, happened even when Ham was walking on the earth. It's not new. Genesis 6 says, God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Skip down to verse 11. It says, the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. It was happening then, just like it's happening now. It, none of this is new. Everything you read in the news is a repeat of 6,000 years ago. But remember this. Cain's descendants and Seth's descendants. Cain's family and Seth's family, they were both living in Ham's day. Cain's family were sinful, they were evil. They were worldly, they were godless, they were secular. Seth's people, however, they found 
uh, founded that godly line of people from whom Noah came. And this was Ham's lineage. Ham's family sought after God. Ham's family wanted a relationship with God. It was Ham's great-great-grandfather, Enoch, who was translated by God. Why? Because he was holy and righteous and preached righteousness. Seth's family was a godly family, but they were quickly becoming a minority. Only eight people got on the boat. And as we can see, Noah stood alone in a sinful society. And Noah's middle son, Ham, he carried with him the sins of, and the evil of the society that he knew and loved before the flood. He carried that with him. And no, Ham could not take technology to the other side of the flood. Ham couldn't take all the art and all the science. Ham couldn't take all the music and all the materialism of the day from before the flood to the other side. But Ham carried sin and evil and wickedness in his heart. The things he loved from before the flood, through the flood, to the other side. You see, Ham went through the church instead of getting in the church. Ham wanted the salvation of his father Noah, but Ham didn't want righteousness. Ham wanted the salvation of his father Noah, but Ham didn't want separation from the world. Ham gravitated more to the secular things than the spiritual things. Ham left a spiritual vacuum in his life, and Satan filled it up with evil. Ham had an amazing daddy. Ham had all the spiritual advantages a son could ever want, but Ham wanted the world. And like Cain, Ham was taught the things of God. Ham was taught the truth. He was taught the same history that Shem and Japheth were taught. Ham was taught to sacrifice to a holy God. He was taught to submit and to be holy and to do what was right. But Ham was seduced and therefore he was misled by the world and misled by Satan. And so John told us, he said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. But what the world offered to Ham appealed to Ham more than the things of God. So I want you to think about the power of the, the appeal of the world. Because Ham saw the world before then he saw salvation. And then he saw what God would do when he came off that boat and there was nobody else alive. And the appeal of the world was still stronger in Ham's life. The appeal of sin was still greater in Ham's life than God, even with seeing the tragedy, the flood. If any person should have, should have or could have known better if any person had the, the ability to see the things of this earth will pass away, it should have been Ham. But there was a vacuum, a spiritual vacuum. You see, Ham did not seek the things of God. And so these evil things of this world filled up Ham. And even with his incredible dad, Noah, teaching him and his incredible dad, Noah, praying for him every day. And even with his experiences before, during, and after the flood, Ham still had a void of the things of God. He went through the church instead of getting in the church. Ham did not fill himself with God. You know people like this. I know people like this. They love God and they love the church, but they don't live for God. They just go through the church. They don't get in the church. And I'm not talking about this building. I'm talking about becoming a member of the family of God. Why do they do this? Because they don't fill themselves with God. You see, you... you you can't fill yourself with pornography and God. It doesn't work. You, you can't fill yourself with wicked music and God. It won't work. You, you can't watch horrifically violent movies. And, and, and now we have this thing called binge watching. I have a lot of students at the college, as you well know, and, and they'll brag about who has been binge watched the most? It's like a trophy thing to them. Why well, binge watch four seasons of this show? I watched binge watch six seasons. I didn't even go to sleep for four days because I didn't want to miss an episode. 
just craziness. They just fill themselves with this. And you'll, you'll hear, now these, these, these are adults. I'm talking about people who are 20, 21, 22, 23 years old. I'm not talking about 14-year-olds. These are adults who will tell me, well, I got off work, and then I, I binge-watched a whole season of, of The Walking Dead, and then I played my Xbox for three hours. And, and you want me to help you? How about I unplug the power from your house? That one might help you. You, you can't fill yourself with all this junk. And, and I'm not up here preaching against movies. Don't misunderstand me. There are decent things you can watch. I'm not up here preaching against uh, being, having entertainment. I believe that God gave us some things. Jesus went to the wedding and had fun. I mean, it had to be fun to turn water to wine. I don't know. <laughs> Jesus loved to sit down and eat with his friends. I'm not preaching against being entertained. I'm preaching against filling yourself with the world. God refuses to coexist with filth in your life. You can't fill yourself up with the things of this world and fill yourself up with God. It won't happen. He will not coexist with filth in your life. You can't fill yourself with secularism and the things of this world and simultaneously try to be full of God. You see, Ham carried the sins and evil from before the flood. All the things he filled himself with before he got on the boat, he took it on the boat with him. And then when he came off the boat, he carried those things off the boat with him into the new world. And if anybody should have known better, it should have been Ham. And the Ark of Noah represents the church. And so think about this. Ham was in the church but he could not let go of his sins and he could not let go of his desire for the things of this world. And so instead of staying in the church, when the flood was over, he said, I'm out of here. He got in long enough just to not be destroyed by the flood. One of these days, it's not going to be a flood. One of these days, it's going to be the rapture. And I don't, I don't know how many times I've had people and seen people that they come to church and they get in church long enough to try to get over drugs. Or they come and get in church long enough to try to, to get over alcohol or to get over something. And when they feel like they've beaten it, then they just return back to the world because they think, well, I'm better now. But you know what? God can heal you of alcoholism or pornography or whatever. He can break every chain. But this is an AA. This is church. This isn't just a quick fix. This is a let's get right and live right and walk right, talk right, act right. This is a let's get ready for heaven kind of thing. Ham went through the church instead of getting in the church. Peter told us, he said, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as, beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. He said, Abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. You see, it's not just a joke or some fancy tale. The lust of the flesh is very real. That's why we fast. The lust of the flesh is so very real. We fast because our flesh is, not, uh, our flesh is too strong when we feed it secular things. So we weaken our flesh so that the spiritual things can begin to be right. And, and, and I don't want you to go through the church. I want you to get in the church. Don't go through this place and come out the other side still carrying the sins of the world. Come into this place, get in the church, stay in the church. Noah, he was a preacher of righteousness, and that was who Ham heard every single day. It's not enough for me just to stand up here and preach because Ham was hearing Noah preach for 100 years. Ham knew holiness is necessary. Ham knew that sin was an abomination to God. Noah continued to preach about the coming judgment of the Almighty God as long as he was building the boat. All the days of Ham's life, he heard a preacher preaching. And I seriously doubt I ever could preach as good as Noah did. And Paul said, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Noah preached this to everyone, including to Ham. But Noah also told everyone how Seth's sacrifice was accepted by God. Noah preached righteousness to everyone and how we're all sinners, but Noah also told everyone about how Enoch was translated because he was righteous. And Noah himself found grace in the eyes of God. And the way that you showed that you really believed in judgment against sin was to get in the ark. 
The, the way to show that you believed in God was to get in the boat. And Noah would have preached this to everyone, especially to Shem, him, and Japheth, his family. And there's no doubt in my mind that Noah also preached, Ham, you have to change. Ham, you cannot live for the world and live for God. Noah was a righteous man, and there's no way that Noah did not stop trying to reach for his three boys. And, and, and no person made Ham get in the ark. Ham, he chose to walk into that ark. He chose to get on the boat. And God will convict people, and God will cause them to walk into the church. But God doesn't make anybody come into the church, and God doesn't make anybody stay in the church. But when Ham walked on that plank to enter through that doorway, Ham refused to let go of the world. He refused to let go of the lust of the flesh and the lust of his heart. The only reason Ham got on that boat was because of the fear that his daddy just might be right. And Jude said, you snatch them out of the fire with fear or with love, either way, but you do it. And so if someone gets in church because I'm preaching holiness and righteousness and that the Lord's coming back one of these days and they get in church out of fear, fine, let it be. But the difference is this. Don't be like Ham and just go through it. You got to get in it. I can hear Ham having a conversation maybe with his wife or maybe in his own mind, thinking, well, I'll get on the boat, and if it rains and there's a flood, then I'm safe. But if Dad was a crazy man, I'll just get off the boat, and I'm still fine. Ham did not want to die in the flood, but he certainly was never a believer. You see, Lot struggled and chose Sodom and Gomorrah over the things of God even after he walked with Abram. Jesus said, some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. You see, Ham had a chance. He, he, he got in the church, but he never let the church get in him. Ham got into the things of God to satisfy his daddy, Noah, but Ham never let the things of God get inside of him. You, you need to fill your life with God. You need to fill your life with his word. Don't fill your life with filthy things. Fill your life with songs that praise him and worship him. Fill your life with just a closer walk with thee. Fill your life with it's going to be worth it all. Fill your life with holy, holy, holy. Fill your life with the songs of, of God and the, and the word of God and the preaching of God. Fill your life with the entertainment of God. Fill your life with the things that matter to God. And when you do this, there's nothing else that can be there. Ham floated through the flood and came out the other side without ever submitting to God and submitting to righteousness. And so we know this, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. And people saying this, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. And so Ham says, I never changed and I made it. I, I made it to the other side of the flood. Ham says, I, I, I never, he scoffs at righteousness. He scoffs at holiness. He scoffs at being separated. He says, I'm still the same man I was when I got on the boat with my daddy. And when the floodwaters were over, I got off. And I was still the same man. I never changed. Ham was a scoffer. I don't know. But I imagine that Ham probably sat around with his buddies before the flood, laughing at his dad. Look at my old man over there building that boat. Wish well, you'd spend more time with me. Look at my old man over there building that boat. He's embarrassing the family. Ham never let the things of God fill him up. And as a result, Ham sinned against his own dad. One of the greatest men of all times. Noah had to be one of the greatest men of all times. He saved the human race. And so Ham commits the sin. And the Bible says Noah began to be in husband and he planted a vineyard and he drank of the wine and was drunken and he was uncovered within his tent and ham the father of canaan he saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without and shem and japheth took a garment and laid it upon their upon both their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father and their faces were backward and they saw not their father's nakedness and noah awoke from his wine and he knew what his younger son had done unto him you see, Shem and Japheth, 
They had been in all the same prayer meetings as Ham had visited. His two brothers had been in all the same churches, all the same services. They had been to all the same camp meetings, all the same conferences, all the same conventions that Ham had been to. They had heard all the same Bible studies that Ham had heard. But Sham and Japheth experienced something that caused them to say, we're not secular. We're not letting the things of this world fill us up. Sham and Japheth experienced something that made them choose holiness. And I, I don't know if they chose it on the boat, before the boat, or when they came off. But something was different about these two boys. We don't know all the sins of Ham. From what we can tell, whatever, Ham did do this to his father. And it was not nearly as bad as what he and his family did later, even after that. And whatever happened, we do not know. But we know this. It was evil, and it was sinful enough that Ham's own father cursed his grandson. Noah cursed. And he said, cursed be Canaan, the son of Ham. A servant of servants shall he be upon his brother. Noah blessed Shem and he blessed Japheth. And he passed over Ham and cursed his son. And look out for Ham's son. That's Canaan. We know because Canaan polluted the promised land. Hear me, hear me tonight. Fill yourself with God. Fill yourselves with the righteousness of God or Satan will fill you with God and he'll fill your home with God. Do not think you can say, well, I'll go to church and I'll attend church. You see, Ham went to church. He was in the ark. You cannot have the world and have God too. You, you got to decide. Joshua said, you choose this day who you're going to serve. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve God. We don't know what sins Ham committed against his own father or what sins Canaan committed. But what we do know is this. They left an evil world. And they got in the church. But the problem is, when the flood was over and they walked off into what should have been a new paradise experience, Ham had brought all the sin. Ham had brought all the sin with him. Don't bring the sin with you. Leave your sin on the other side of the flood. Leave your sin before the flood. When you go down in this water, you go down for the remission of sins. Leave your sins before the water. Don't go through the church. Get in the church. Just don't do this to, to overcome something. Do this to live for God. Don't do this because you don't know what else to do. Do this to live for God. Don't do this because you, you need help. We all need help. Do this because you want to live for God. Would you stand with me? Most of you know me well. On one side, I'm fourth generation apostolic. On the other side, third generation. Makes me a lot like Ham in the sense that my daddy is a preacher of righteousness. And all my life, my daddy was building a boat. But I had to decide for myself to get in it and to stay in it.